This is Viral. We introduce you to the best internet shows out there and the coolest people making those videos. And we have a special treat for you today. We are going to prom. I don't know. Everyone goes to prom. Prom is the single most important night of your life. A character who loves prom. What she said. It's not really my thing. <laughs> I'm the jokester of the whole group. I would be caught dead at prom. So all this hullabaloo is just sickening to her. It is going to be the best night of your freaking life. We're on the set of Prom Queen, and I'm here with all four directors, which you guys probably remember from our first season of Viral, because they directed Sam Has Seven Friends. Doug Cheney, Chris McCaleb, Chris Hampel, and Ryan Wise. For our viewers that may not be familiar with Prom Queen yet, what is the show about? The last two months of senior year leading up to the prom. It's a murder mystery. It's like this microcosm of reality. It's this little petri dish where you just drop one variable in and it can explode. We're delivering this show as we make it, which is great, exciting. It gives us time to, to react to the audience. The audience can react and tell you what they think. They can have an influence on you as a storyteller. How much bigger is Prom Queen as far as cast and crew compared to Sam and Seven Friends? Everything's probably just two times bigger. A cast of 12 students, a few um, parents and teachers in there. The crew, we run around with about 12 to 15, you know, really integral people. They see the excitement of this whole brimming new medium. Let's get viral. Moonshine is about a journalist, probably the lead writer of a UFO magazine. He finds like crazy stuff, aliens, that has nine legs. He is stumbling upon the biggest things in UFO history. Suddenly he finds himself being transported. Check this out. The magical button that he pushes. Nobody believes what he's saying, but it's all been true the whole time. When It's All in Your Hands started, we always thought, let's add more shows onto this thing. Let's make it grow. I was always obsessed with UFOs. I literally had this old briefcase at home and I popped it open and I was just going through all these old ideas. And rolling action. It kind of evolved into this weird kooky thing that it is now. Rick Darge is such a talented creator. So the UFO is literally going to come from over there on the horizon. They're professional, they're really creative, and they really love the actor's input too. Now what? We shoot the whole episode in one day or two days. We break it up into three parts. At the end of the third act, that's when the viewers have the choice of where the story should go. So we still give them a week to vote, and then we tally the votes and write the new script. We get the script about four or five days in advance. We have to find locations and props and basically everything that needs to be there for the day of the shoot. This one that we just shot was our largest cast and crew that we've had. Look! And it was so difficult getting everyone together at one time. We literally had a four hour window where we had to just jam through 10 pages of the script. We have a one week turnaround for post-production on this. We do sound, score, editing in one week. What you saw being shot today was the beginning of a shot that will one day after some special effects be a giant UFO. We kind of keep the effects for the later acts, like act three. We had to leave that for the end because we just got done shooting and I need to hand this footage over to my visual effects guy so he's got enough time to work on it. And the fact that they can vote on what we do next, I think is so cool. You know, Combined with the good writing and, and the audience leading us with the direction, I think it's great. Wait for it, Toby. If you go onto the internet and type in uh, itsallinyourhands.com, you can check us out. Interactive website, choose your own adventure, itsallinyourhands.com. It's great that we're at NAB, it's great that the industry is officially recognizing what's going on. Everyone can be on the internet, so no one person is more special than another. I think it's really exciting that NAB is now offering podcasting. Podcasting is here and it's the future. It's the secret sessions, we call them. We get good tips, we see where everybody is, see if we're ahead of the curve. It's really cool that it's at a conference like this and being taken more seriously. And I think podcasting is absolutely going to be huge. Taking content and getting it out there for audiences. This is not very different behind the whole concept behind broadcasting. So you go and you get a chance to learn from people who know about areas you don't know about. If these are people who are looking to do shows of their own, what pitfalls to avoid? By raising the quality of your production, you can gain a greater acceptance and a larger audience. At the end of the day though, it's about entertainment. And as long as we're continuing to entertain, there's no reason for us to stop. We want to inform, we want to entertain, we want to serve the public through this. It's still all in its infancy. It feels like we should be well past the golden age by now. We haven't even entered it. Yeah, we're here to stay and make a big impact in the media world. 
He's Steve Tatum of The Ointment, a political show with a comedic flair, which ironically was inspired by Amanda Congdon and the entire Rockaboom team. So how does this husband and father of two produce a daily internet show and maintain a full-time job? Well, you'll just have to see it to believe it. Claire, how are you? Good. Because I have the full-time job and the family, and then I get, I, after these guys go to bed, then I start shooting. So it's like I'm up till one o'clock, five nights a week. Yeah. Good. Wow, that is this late. Yeah, you make me wait. The only way this gets done is that I'm not a perfectionist, because you know, if I were doing this every night, and if I were a perfectionist, it would never get done. Oh, you smell clean. Okay, here we go. I pick out a shirt. And I get my pajamas because when I'm done at about one in the morning, I don't want to wake up Mary. Once there was a tree and she loved a little boy. I start when the kids go to bed at about eight. It's topical material that I do and, and it also soothes my irritation because I'm very passionate politically and I have a point of view. I had a cinematographer come over here and set the lights and then I just put tape on the floor so that's where the light goes. I asked a camera person, well, what kind of camera to buy? And they told me and I bought it. See, this is the real reason I'm doing this video vlog, just so I can put the kids to bed and then put on some pancake makeup. It's Wednesday, November 29, 2006, and you are watching The Ointment. I'm Steve Tatum, and I'm here to serve. And in downtown Los Angeles, there's a Starbucks every 12 inches. And that's a wrap. I've downloaded my stuff, and so I'm cutting it together with iMovie. I have the picture in picture and I have the graphic that I add in the music. And I add in the opening and closing titles. And then once that's all done, I compress it. So then it's squeezed. I have the flash file, I FTP it. And then I just go to WordPress and do the posting and put in a few keywords that I hope people will be searching for. Well, that's it. Looks like the show's there. That's a wrap. I'm going to bed. It's almost one o'clock in the morning. Good night, Theo. Ooh! Average Betty does for home and cooking what Punk did for rock and roll. She cuts the link and cranks the volume. Talking about food in a funny, silly way was really the whole idea behind it initially. So, what are we gonna have for lunch today? Welcome to Fish Camp! Hi, welcome to Pita Hut. Can I take your order, please? I love to cook. And I got a video camera and I just thought, how can I put together stories that I want to tell and incorporate cooking? We actually share a lot of the responsibilities, the writing, the directing, the producing. From concept to completion, it's about a two-week process. Choose the food, see how it fits into what's going on in the world. Maybe it rhymes with something, maybe there's something really funny in the news. It's a lot of fun working with Sarah. She's a great cook and she's... Surprise! a brilliant actress. Surprise! She's doing all of the characters, but the characters need to interact with something, and I don't like being on camera, so we'll just have me hand her something, or I'll pat her on the back. The hand, the hand can do lots of things. The hand holding coffee cake, now that's funny. Definitely getting a lot more viewer mail, which is totally fun. Requests of characters they'd like me to be, like a hippie, <laughs> other food items like granola, different Italian dishes. I finally got a great meatball recipe, and it's funny just to say meatball, <laughs> so. Let's talk about some of the things that you're cooking today. These are the perfect shrimp, and that's really what the episode The Perfect Shrimp is about. I had nightmares about it. How can Average Betty go around calling one of her Something dishes perfect. perfect? What is included on this? Obviously shrimp. I'm sitting on a little piece of cucumber. They're topped with Chinese hot sauce, avocado, and sesame seed. And perfect. <laughs> it's very good. It's very good. For recipes and more, you can check out AverageBetty.com. And there's a new feature, printable recipes. What does invisible engine mean? It refers to a child's imagination. A kid pushing around his like train around the tracks with like the invisible engine being his imagination. All right, well, here's what we're working with. Chris, Matt, and I met at uh, University of Southern California where we all went to school. We lucked into a small sum of money and uh, we shot a feature digitally because it was not a, a great sum of money. And then while we were waiting for that movie to be finished editing and sending it out to festivals, we had the equipment left over, so we started making short films. Action! Showing them to our friends, and then they would pass them around. So we're like, all right, we're just gonna make a central place. 
for people to watch our videos. We'll start a website. And then strangers started watching our videos, which confused us and excited us. It's not one but two beef parts patties. Down. Our stuff is very strange. We always get that comment a lot. More onions, red onions, fried crumbs, cactus, kippers. People either like us or they're just really perplexed by us. All of us kind of share all the production duties, depending on who's in what short and who's playing what role. Today it worked out that most of the short was Chris's character being funny, and then Sean was in the short too, so I ended up filming everything today. I went in thinking it was a comedy. Today marks the first day that anyone ever cross-dressed for an Invisible Engine short, one of us. And I played an old woman who's in a book club, and she's a crazy old woman. I had a dream last night that my legs were coming out of my shoulders. Have you seen Death Wish? Have you seen The Substitute? Have you ever bathed in kitten flesh? It was actually like a pretty simple concept for us. Because usually it's like, Chris's head turns into an insect and eats children. Good night, sweet princess. Most of our ideas come from either something we're talking about like at dinner or like we'll be watching yeah. a movie and you gotta actually. Yeah, you gotta. It doesn't oh, just happen. You gotta right. close the eyes. We would go out and shoot like an hour later. We don't have a script. We just kind of have a general idea of how things are gonna go. And then we shoot it, and then we really don't know if it's gonna come together or not until we sit down and edit it. Oh. Nope. Nope. That's not it at all. We wanna keep doing Invisible Engine uh, by all means. Just keep putting out shorts the best we can. Internet serials, longer story arcs over longer periods of time, feature films, television shows, holographic movies, or whatever comes along in the next five years. We wanna keep pushing the envelope. If you'd like to laugh until you wet yourself, check out InvisibleEngine.com.